when it burn out, burn its caps up. And here's Kurt's Class A Fed amplifier, low distortion. We're we're running off of the super capacitors right here. That's why it keeps going. <laughs> and also the Fets are cold, so it needs to have more. They need to warm up a little to perform correctly. So what can you tell me about this one? This is the Nelson Pass design? Yes it is. Uh, Nelson Pass has a occasion that he does every year called Burning Amp, which I attended virtually this year. Burning Amp started many years ago and the original project for Burning Amp was the Amp Camp Amp, which is a Class A FET based amplifier, uh, which I have built. But this is not that. This is a ACA 2.1. So this is a push-pull uh, design, complementary push-pull Class A amplifier. Nelson added a couple of features here. He's got these two jumpers, and I haven't noticed much of a difference, but you can actually pull those while the amp is playing to uh, change the sound of it. Oh, let me turn it on here so it warms up. Real easy construction. This is a super easy half day afternoon type project here. Um, the only thing that really takes time with it is turning those pots. You have to do in two places, do biasing on this. So you got to run two meters to bias it properly. Um, one of the cool features, the reason it was playing and distorting for so long after it was off is we've got these two little blue capacitors are actually super capacitors. I, they're, I forget how many, you know, big number farads they are in those tiny little cases. Um, other than that, you know, easy project, nice class A amplifier. It sounds super great on high efficiency speakers. Uh, I've got some 100 dB speakers at home that I, I just set them right on the speaker cabinet and they're my TV sound. So it works really well for that. Oh, nice board. I like the way you put it on a board. Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. Good little project amp. Yeah, Nelson actually makes multi-thousand dollar amplifiers, so getting any of his for anything of his for hundred some bucks is you know, you're really getting a good value for that. And the board actually is a piece of cherry that my friend Andy helped me finish, cut and finish. Um, and that is a natural finish. That is a an oil finish on there. So, I, it, the amp could have been cased, but I just liked the look at. It. I thought those towers looked like little skyscrapers or something. So I thought it would be just fine to put it out in the open. And I have no no small children to break it or kill themselves on it. ACA mini article dot PDF. This is a little amp camp amp uh, by Nelson Pass. It's not a real practical amp. It does under 1% distortion at 5 watts. It should have very good transit response, however, because it's only two stages deep. And being that it's all FET, you can get away with that because there's, you know, it's all voltage control basically. FETs are voltage controlled, whereas bipolars are current controlled. So this amp's only two steps deep. The biasing is simple. It's done by, you know, control pots, basically. You know, here and here, these two control pots. The schematic can be a little bit confusing. The input FETs are right here. I'm circling them with my cursor. It'd be nice if they put circles around them because they look... It can be a little bit strange to look at. It. But that's two FETs. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So four FETs. Complement your symmetry. Now he did this thing with this jumper, and that's because, like with bipolars, the N types tend to be more stronger than the P types. This is a class A amplifier, and it's based on FETs, MOSFETs. It gets about 1% distortion at 5 watts a channel, so not really glowing specs there. It should have some really good. Uh, transient response, of course that may or may not be true, I have to test it. But it's a real simple amp, two stages, not a whole lot of feedback. The thing is the uh, N type and the P type, just like with the bipolar transistors, the P types, the PNPs, don't have as much gain as the NPNs. And the same thing happens here with the uh, 
MOSFETs. The P-types don't have that much gain. They don't make a good match. So what they do to balance it out in this circuit is there's a resistor on the sources of both of these that gives you a little bit of feedback, uh, local feedback, local destructive feedback. Yeah, right here, the two resistors give you that little bit of feedback. So to make the gain a little more even, give this one a little more help, he put a bypass around the one resistor so we could lower this resistor in effect. I don't know if he really needed to put this cap in series with it or not. That's the, where he put the super cap. I kind of questioned the voltage rating of that super cap as well. Uh, at only 2.6 volts or whatever it is, it's, I question that it couldn't get that high you know, right off a switching device here. Of course, it's guarded by this 0.75 resistor. And then with this other resistor paralleled to it, you know, maybe it's 0.5. Still, I wonder. It would depend on how reactive your speaker load was, for one thing. If you even had a speaker load hooked up. There's a 1K on here for safety, I suppose. But I still wonder about that voltage rating and that super gap. At any rate, that is just a little device to give you a little bit of help to make these transistors work more evenly. When Without it, you get a lot of second harmonic distortion because this just doesn't keep up with this one. You get uneven waveforms, you know, and also the whole thing is put on a 24 volt power supply, which is kind of a limitation too. I wonder if these devices could handle a little more. Yeah, with a single ended power supply, you got to have a cap on the output. So I really question whether this is really truly audiophile grade, as he implies. 1% distortion, 5 watts. Should have an excellent frequency response. It should have an excellent uh, transient response. Like I said, I don't see any tests there for that. Even uh, gives you stages for stuffing it, gives you a parts list. I would buy from him because he matches the parts for you. You get more or less matched parts, which would be really tough to do on your own. And some of those effects can be tough to get anyway. They're not the most common things in the world. But yeah, here's the stages. You always put the smaller components in first and put the bigger ones in. And it gives you lots of nice pictures. It's a good kit. To me, it's a little bit strange. You know, you're, you got a lot of distortion. I mean, 1%. One, 1%. It's with the jumper. Without the jumper, it doesn't even do 1%. It's a little worse. Uh, the th reason he put the jumper in as an optional thing is because some people like that tube sound. Uh, that strong second harmonic that you get with the unbalanced output devices. You know, right at 5 watts, you're just barely clearing it. Here, you're down a few. You know, you're down to 0 0.5. So, you lower distortion quite a bit, 0 0.4. And I frankly would run it with the jumper, although I really questioned that super cap. I even questioned the need for the super cap. I wonder if you couldn't just soak that up in the bias. Biasing is really crude in this amp. Which is why it has to warm up when you fire it up. Let me go back to that circuit diagram. Yeah, you know, the biasing is real crude. It's just a pot on you know on each device here. So I wonder if you couldn't just do without this cap, just bridge this right across. You know, use a 0.5 here instead of a 0.75 basically, and make it up with this pot. It'd be interesting to see. But obviously he did this not to upset the DC because he liked the way the DC was working out. It'd be an interesting experiment to play with. So there you have it, a minimalistic 5 watt amplifier that'll keep the tube people happy, the uh, second harmonic people happy. And a little extra second harmonic distortion kind of sharpens music, kind of makes music crisper and it depends on the music too, it can make some music sound like crap, it doesn't do wonders for violins and stuff like that. Anyway, a little bit of second harmonic distortion kind of acts like a sharpness to some music. And it, it can blur some music like violins and stuff like that, but it can sound sharp on other types of music that are more momentary, more lively. It's kind of akin to turning up sharpness on a video or image where it starts to, you know, look crappy after you turn it too high. It gets bizarre and distorted, but uh, with a little tiny bit of it, it sharpens it up a little bit, brightens it up. It kind of does it in audio too with the second harmonic. And he only claims a damping factor of 10 for this amplifier. So how reactive your speaker is might be a real issue with this amp. If you have a real reactive speaker that's kicking back a lot of stuff to the amp, this amp may not like that, it may not sound good. And the problem with that is more efficient speakers tend to be more reactive. So <laughs> you kind of need a high efficiency speaker for this amp, obviously at 5 watts. But you want one that's not super reactive or strangely reactive. 
like most of the speakers I make are.